starting out strong with this sci-fi vibe. We don't even need a Lightyear movie, we got this. Imagine what else they might have done if the mouse had owned Star Wars back then. Oh, never mind. That is a TIE Fighter cannon sound destroying an eyeball looking thing from Return of the Jedi. And that must be Buzz Vader inside there. I'm just kidding, I know it's a Tattletail Gatekeeper droid. For real though, this is awesome. Why did it take so long for us to get an honest to goodness Buzz Lightyear action flick? The glow in the dark suit itself is what's lighting his way? That's a dope suit design and a dope toy design. Man, I love seeing all of Buzz's gadgets work the way he thinks they should when he doesn't know he's a toy. Even as kids, I think everyone knew this wasn't real, but it's still a bold move to eviscerate a main character less than five minutes in. And then the writers of Up saw this and said, hold my beer. And they even upped the details from the first movie. Dirt smudges and dents on the dresser, dirty water droplets on the window, seams in the wallpaper. Nice reminder that Buzz likes to do the daring stuff. That'll probably come in handy later. The missus lost her earring. And tying up all those loose ends from the last film. Mrs. Potato Head. Gee, I bet it's shade. Also, can't think of a better cast than Estelle Harris as Mrs. Potato Head to Rickles' mister. It's so nice to have a big, strong spot around the house. <laughs> Great bait and switch, tying up even more loose ends. Wow, a puppy! <laughs> Aw, oh, I want a dire wolf-sized wiener dog. Stupid reality. Oh, death by monkeys! Well, Andy's playtime has taken a step up in gruesomeness, which makes sense since he's older. You know, toys don't last forever. Oof, hate you, Pixar. Ah, yes, the system they were playing was a Super Nintendo. Never had one. I hear they're great. <laughs> oh man, is that Morning Dove a callback to the end of Toy Story when Woody and Buzz think they're left behind? Feels like it is. Again, getting pretty dark here, Pixar. Even if being discarded by your owner isn't a relatable nightmare, I think we all understand what it means to toys. Well, I tried squeaking, but I'm still broken. No one could hear me. <laughs> I know it works out for Wheezy at the end of this film, and I'm still stressed. This is how they get you. <laughs> Rex is allowed to move his eyes, I guess. Nope. I knew where every one of my toys was, even if it was stuffed under the bed. If I came back from camp and my mom had just sold them, yeah, there would be some words. And then some extra chores after I said those words. Oh, Ingenuity. No, no! <laughs> Bullseye shadowing. Puppy Woody still works for me. Honey, you don't want that toy. It's broken. Regardless of how broken it is, it's not yours. I know Al is the villain in this film, but I think we can all agree that this random mom needs to learn some toy etiquette. Humans. He's stealing Woody. What? Stealing. He can't take Woody. It's illegal. He? Tell that to Andy's mom. She clearly stole Sid's table and all the locks from his door. Buzz really goes for it here, which I can understand after Woody pulled out all the stops for him last movie. If the Al's Toy Barn license plate wasn't enough for us, the feathers really nail it home, letting the kids get that insider feeling. At precisely 8.32-ish. <laughs> Accuracy. Now the vehicle fled the scene in this direction. Their eyes are in backwards. It went the other way. Hey, they're actually giving a great example of why experts no longer think eyewitness testimony is actually valid anymore. Everybody remembers everything differently. Our memories suck and are influenced by a whole bunch of variables. Complex legal realities from the makers of Cars 2. Why don't you watch where you're going, God Spiller? <laughs> Got him. I am in the middle of something really important. What's it like to be the go-to guy for slimy, untrustworthy, generally unlikable casting? You have a gift, Wayne Knight. A gift. Gonna make me big bucks. <laughs> also, he really loves those bird puns. It's at times like these, I like to remember that Oscar-winning national treasure Thomas Jeffrey Hanks had to sit in a booth and make grunting sounds. Thank you for your service, sir. <laughs> Can't believe I have to drive all the way to work. Well, you see, working from home really destroys that company culture we've been trying to build, and also we already own this building, and it's tough to keep an eye on. Wait, doesn't Al own Al's toy barn? Man, even he hates his boss. It's you! It's you! Great character intro, and the fact that Jesse picks Woody up butt first will never not be funny to me. Fantastic art for the toy box, not to mention the scuffed cardboard corners and places on the plastic view sheet that have been worn by the prospector's hat. The attention to detail. Kyle Chandler's bullseye is the icing on the cake here, but I've got to give it to 37 at the time, Joan Cusack for sounding not a day over 22. That's how old Jesse is, right? Everyone knows your name, Woody. The only cereal that's sugar frosted and dipped in chocolate. They have chocolate frosted sugar bombs? There's almost too much to comment on here. Frazier's shame at the pickaxe in his bum, but Bullseye's aw shucks kick is so adorable and such a great touch. And the lyrics sound like he's a smirtin'. He's a smirtin'. So they sort of confirm that Woody is an homage to Howdy Doody, but let's just be clear, a much less creepy homage. 
You're probably wondering what's on all the channels, and it's a lot, but mostly it's Listerine commercials and this? Etch is basically a smartphone before smartphones and is clearly the most intelligent out of all the toys. Just saying, not sure they're getting the full credit they deserve. Woody once risked his life to save me. I couldn't call myself his friend if I weren't willing to do the same. Friendship! That plane in the gutter is just so real, genuinely unsure how many gliders I lost on the roof as a kid. I hope they've forgiven me. Fun fact, this isn't shot on actual film, it's just another computer animation with added film grain and tracking lines, even light bloom on the bright spots to mimic that old timey film look. A record player! I haven't seen one of these in ages. Right, fun reminder that Woody is old. No, can't go. I can't do storage again! It's sort of played for laughs, but they make the trauma of storage seem pretty dang awful, which makes sense if you think about it. Without you, we go back into storage. NBD, no stakes here. Just either leave your previous life and everyone you love, or send these new friends into indefinite solitary confinement. No big whoop. The shot composition really shows you the scale of everything around the toys. Uh, all right, nobody look till I get my cork back in. The implications of this moment are... Confusing? I feel like Pixar enjoys planting questions in our heads and never answering them. And that concludes our broadcast day. Genius transition. Also, yes, there was a time when TV just stopped. It was done for the night. Between this and the VHS tapes, this is becoming a period piece. Cheesy Fingers detail is spot on. Although there's literally no way Al's not a finger licker. No judgment, I'm just saying. I'm gonna make you look at this for a lot longer than you'd probably like to, but speaking of details, the red of his nostrils and nose hair connecting to his mustache, subtle blemishes, scars on his neck that don't grow hair, the change in direction of beard growth. I will say Al has some of the most luscious lashes anyone could ask for. You hitting that Latisse, Newman? Anyway, they finally figured humans out and they are letting us know. See, Bullseye gets it. <laughs> Truly disgusting. Hey, now I can feel the warmth on my face. <laughs> Love it. What? No, officer, I swear. Huh, not sus at all. Hey, is that a Bugs Life painting? Yeah! I think even with both arms, nobody's betting on Woody in this fight. I think it's a Joan Cusack thing. I wouldn't mess with Sheila Jackson. Losing health units. Must rest. Rex has gone full gamer now. I hear the SNES would do that to you. <laughs> Why did the toys cross the road? Not now, Ham. To get to the chicken on the other side! Look, I love a joke explanation as much as the next guy, but I feel like I need to clear up the whole the other side is the afterlife. No. You can add meaning to a joke after, but the punchline of that joke is the non-punchline. That's the joke. You set up a joke and then everyone waits for the laugh and then you just say what happens. What do you call a boomerang that won't come back? A stick. Why is five in love with six? It's not. They're numbers. They don't experience love. Uh, anyway. Oh well, we tried. Is the specimen ready for cleaning? <gasps> Jerry! From his lack of teeth, it looks like he lost recently. I can't really explain it, but this is one of those scenes I think about a lot. It just brings me lots of joy. And I'm not even a figure painter. I just love the cleaner's gear and setup and that Woody gets all spruced up. The whole sequence is so well done. The way Woody's eye gets a mirror shine, the texture of Jerry's hands. It's bonkers when you realize this movie was made over 20 years ago and what? He painted over Andy's name? Nope, over it. Jerry's dead to me. But also he does bald spots? Forget Rogaine, from now on it's Rogear Jerry. Nailed it. No, 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 all together. Now! Uh, Teamwork. <laughs> the terror of the needle for Woody. They make it so you can't defeat Zerg unless you buy this book. It's extortion, that's what it is. Comrade Dinosaur makes a good point. Tell me I wasn't this deluded. No back talk. It's gotta be a depressing reality to meet yourself and realize you're just a glorified space narc. But Buzz is taking it surprisingly well. You know, he probably appreciates the continuity that all Buzzes are self-important morons who don't know their toys. Am I really that fat? I mean, let's wait, 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 wait. Oh man, I can feel and smell what Buzz is smelling right now. It's not meant to be weird. It, it smells like a special kind of metal. It's, it's... I'm a married spot. I'm a married spot. For the single fellas. You're also a potato and she's a woman and you're both toys? How would it even, like, do they, or, or can he? And there's that back flap? Also, there's a pig. Sorry, sorry. Like I said, Pixar makes you ask some hard to answer questions. Wait, why is the price marked up 10x for Canadians? Oh, that's a tight Jurassic Park reference. Slow down, must go faster. Good stuff. We did that one, right? Some more toy nightmare material that gives us an idea of how awful it's been for the Roundup gang. Even though you're not moving, you feel like you're alive, because that's how he sees you. Uh-oh. Emily was just the same. She was my whole world. Oh, no. Tell me there isn't a meaningful monologue set to Randy Newman music coming. When somebody loved me, everything was beautiful. Well, here come the waterworks. 
This scene, I'm not about ranking Pixar movies, but this moment is up there as one of the saddest. Y'all know I love me some Randy Newman and this song is flawless. Sarah McLachlan singing it gives me goosebumps. And then of course, the imagery, the passage of time shown by dust accumulating on Jesse's face and the posters in Emily's room make it pretty clear that Emily had Jesse in the 60s or 70s, meaning Jesse has been in storage for a very long time. And then that last car ride where Jesse looks so content back with the one she loves only to be left in a box as Emily drives away. Gonna fall asleep mumbling, toys aren't real, toys aren't real, over and over tonight. Oh dang, that makes those Chekhov's balls. What a fun twist, complete with a shredder hand punching out of the garbage. How are we gonna get up there? Maybe if we find some balloons, we could float to the top. And again, the writers of Up muttered, hold my beer. To overnight six packages to Japan is how much? Do you also hate it when they talk about money in movies and shows and never divulge the amount to keep it timeless? Me too, so I did some napkin math, and it's anywhere between $1,400 and $2,000 to ship those six boxes to Japan in four business days. There wasn't even an overnight option, so we could be talking about double or triple that. And the fact that he's gonna do it brings us back to the actual value of the Roundup crew. Single G.I. Joe figures from the late 80s go for low to mid five figures now. So it's fair to guess this entire set was in the 50 grand range. Maybe more? And then Al added a zero making it 500 grand or more. So 10K on shipping and plane tickets, ain't no big deal. That's custom fitted foam insulation you'll be riding in, Bullseye. I mean, that actually does sound pretty nice. Hey, heads up down there. Whoa, pork bellies are falling. Hey, I get that reference. Stocks, but more importantly, trading places when Eddie Murphy breaks the fourth wall at random for no reason at all. and We were all totally cool with it. Pork bellies, which is used to make bacon, which you might find in a bacon and lettuce and tomato sandwich. Three! Ah! To infinity and beyond! Ugh, apparently all pre-toy realization buzzes fail to success. It's not flying, it's falling upward with style. Say, little missy, you notice any trouble around these parts? Woody Wayne. Ha, speaking of breaking fourth wall. That's Woody. Ow. Quality howl, Slink. Resourcefulness. Use your head. But I don't want to use my head. Dad jokes. So who's the real Buzz? I am. He's been trained by Zurich himself to mimic my every move. <laughs> oh. The stairs. By the way, something I forgot to mention in the first movie is the evolution of Andy's signature. The N is backwards and shaky on Woody's original stamp, and Buzz is as clean and the N is forward facing. Buzz, I was a yo yo. Was. French fry burn. One more rip and Andy's done with me. And what do I do then, Buzz, huh? You tell me. Somewhere in that pad of stuffing is a toy who taught me that life's only worth living if you're being loved by a kid. Great writing. They both have solid points. And while we might be partial to Team Andy, Team Museum makes a lot of sense. And while Woody can be selfish at times, he seems to genuinely care for the Roundup Gang. It's a hard choice. This is my only chance. Watch kids from behind glass and never be loved again? Some life. Harsh, but I do enjoy the full 180 Buzz has done since the last movie. But none of them will ever love you. Way I do. Making it canon is a great way to bring back everyone's favorite song. Buzz Lightweight can't help you. His name is Buzz Lightyear. Light beer if I'm feeling sassy. <laughs> awesome shot. Badass bad guy. You killed my father. No, Buzz. I am your father. Did not see this coming, and they almost got the line right. Got the I am part at least. I finally defeated Zerg. True SNES gamer satisfaction. <laughs> Wait, I'm an adult, I can just buy an SNES. By the way, I made a video about a game on Nebula, so go watch it. <laughs> Mr. Potato Head always has the right parts for the odd job missions. Even without being the staple of Pixar movies, this is a gorgeous truck. Datsun S10? Ooh, or is it an OG Toyota pickup? I want one either way. <gasps> I wonder if they'll ever repay this favor in the most emotionally moving scene of all time. You have saved our lives. We are eternally grateful. Ha, butt on his butt. My kind of comedy. I think it's time you learned the true meaning of playtime. Right over there, guys. No. Look, Barbie, a big ugly man doll. <laughs> you like Amy. <gasps> She's an artist. They set this up as being something terrible when the reality is that this kid is just going to play with him. It's not like he's being sent to a trash incinerator or anything. That'd be way too messed up for a kid's movie. Ride like the wind, bullseye! Tight callback to Woody's roundup, but it's less riding, more like slipping with style. Toy Story movies are two for two with ending in great action sequences. This time a very on genre train chase and then run atop the train. Oh no, she was curled up in the fetal position because she was trapped in a dark box again. I can't do storage again, I just can't. Jesse, Jesse. I won't go back in the dark. You sure about this? No, let's go. Confidence. I mean, yup, they completed the series. 
So look, about that theory. It's totally possible that they were just reusing assets for Andy's hat, but that's no fun. And that he has the same exact hat as Jesse's, just missing the white band that could have absolutely been taken off and lost at some point. So I do think Emily, Jesse's original owner, is Andy's mom. We don't see her get rid of the hat, and the ages work out. They really lucked out that Andy came in his room first, because if his mom did, she'd probably call the cops and tell them someone broke into her house and left toys and a message for her son. Yeah, you don't want to be owned by her. Because she already has dragons. That's all. Might eat you. Well, aren't you the sweetest face toy I ever met? Flirting, but wow, match made in heaven. This fella says he needs to go out back for a little private time. Huh, dogs talking to each other. They don't have any more hands to hold all the beers, writers of Up. Oh, look, his schwings. Don't feel bad for Al. He stole from a child. And was mean to service industry people. And he parked in an accessible parking spot. Also, he put shaving cream on that person's pie that one time. We definitely did it, right? You got a friend. Ending it out with the one and only Robert Goulet. Wait, so it, it's a mini boom mic, meaning the movies are made by a mini film crew? Of toys? Yeah, that works. Real funny, Woody. All right, we're losing our life. Wipe it off and let's go again. <laughs> Spot on annoyed AD. It's not the bug's life tool. Well then, well, I, I don't understand. What is it then? <laughs> Ha! Work is work, no shame in it, guys. And I just noticed that Buzz is using his karate chop action that he learned from Woody last movie. It's a karate chop action! Get away! Hey, hey, how you doing? Also, just in case you thought I missed it, Mrs. Potato is reading about Bugs Life, and there's a Bugs Life looking calendar on the wall. Also, these toys at Al's. Is everybody gone? <laughs> huh? Good. And I bet movie theater clerks thought this was bad. They still had a minute of credits to get people to leave. The days of rushed straight to video Disney sequels came to an end with Toy Story 2. I mean, kinda, because it's Pixar, but also I guess Rescuers Down Under. Still, the point is that we got a fully fleshed out story that built off of the first one, and it's like actual canon. Bet you didn't know The Lion King 2 Simba's Pride isn't canon. I feel like that's the type of thing to start a flame war, but none of those Bambis 2 were Returns of Jafar on the main Disney Animation Studio list. But if they're canon to you, that's, that's good enough for me. Anyway, Toy Story 2, a movie about a moral conundrum. Not a Sophie's choice so much as a which is the better of these two pretty great options choice. But beyond that, I think the main fun thing that Toy Story 2 does is switch Buzz and Woody's roles. Buzz is initially the one with the identity crisis, and this time around it's Woody who's not sure who he is or where he belongs. Again, not because of any form of rejection, but simply everyone wanting him at the same time. Although, the choices reveal the movie's actual lesson to us, one I feel as a parent. Woody has the option to be immortal, forever preserved, but it means missing Andy's life. Coming to grips with his own mortality isn't a simple thing, but by the end, he says something that many parents say as they realize they aren't the center of their own story anymore. I wouldn't miss it for the world. He says that even after seeing a glimpse into his potential future through Jesse's flashback. We know it mostly works out, but Woody doesn't. Now, humans don't have the choice to be preserved in amber and Asia, but then, did Woody ever really have a choice? I mean, yeah, he did, but not for the purposes of the movie. And yet, it's still such a fun movie with stellar action scenes, a bunch of comedy, and has that classic adventure feeling that even the first movie didn't truly capture. It wouldn't be possible without the cast. Wayne Knight really stands out as the villain, but all the new additions add something special to the story. Even secondary baddie Kelsey Grammer isn't just a one-note villain. He can't even understand the choice Woody's going through because he's never had a kid. Honestly, as I said, I think he'll actually come out a happier dude in the end. And who can't get behind that? Looking forward to winning three has one of my Favorite? No, I don't, I don't think I'd say favorite, but it has a scene that uh, feel. Well, we'll just have to see what I have to say when we get there. Next week. Oh, hey, next week is Zack Snyder's Justice League Part One. Get hype! I promise it's really happening this time. You know, unless something crazy happens. Until next week. In just a few hours, you'll be sitting around a campfire with Andy making delicious hot schmoes.